think that's my cue. I'm Ronnie Bean, and uh, I was born in Seagrove. Actually, I was born in Asheville, but I was reared or raised in Seagrove, just according to how far out in the country you were. And, uh, but I was raised, and uh, uh, my mom and dad was placed in Gladys Bean. Uh, graduated from Westmore High School. God called me to preach in 1968, and I went to Fruitland uh, Bible Institute up in Hendersonville. And God has blessed me tremendously, and so uh, happy to be with y'all today that I was able to be here. Uh, I was talking to Brother Sam. I'm trying a new thing, and found out he is too. Uh, preaching from my iPad. So uh, if this works, we'll be good. If it don't, we won't. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it works out. But we are in Matthew uh, chapter 5, and uh, we're going to be talking to you about salt today. Um, Christ was talking to, uh, to him on the mount, we call it the uh, the attitudes, but I had a preacher friend called it beautiful attitudes. And I think Jesus gave us some attitudes that we need to have as a church. And in the course of this, he said, you are the salt of the earth. And he was speaking to his disciples and all the, those gathered around about him that were trusting in him and that they would be salt. And he had told them also they would be fishers of men. And I guess that makes sense. You know, you've got to have some salt on some fish. It's hard to eat fish without salt, or it is for me. And so he told them that, and, and Jesus was very practical in everything that he said. He told them they would be the salt of the earth, and uh, this would encourage them because they were going to be uh, in their sufferings and uh, they were going to be treat, treated with contempt and uh, that they was going to be a blessing to the world. You know, when you think about how small salt is and how much it can do, just a little bit of salt can do a lot to a piece of meat or a tomato or even a watermelon. Somebody said, oh, watermelon? Yeah. I like a little salt on a watermelon. And also, salt is a good preservative. And they used salt in the old days, and I know I've helped kill hogs, and we use salt to preserve the ham. You know, that's some good eating there when you uh, slice off a piece of that meat and, and fry it and eat it with uh, some eggs. That's some good eating. And it's all because of salt and what's, how valuable salt is. So when Jesus said, you are the salt, he was talking about how valuable you are. Even in the Old Testament, listen to this in, in Numbers, all the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offered unto the Lord have I given thee and thy sons and thy daughters with thee by statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. So even in the Old Testament, God used Saul as a covenant to him. And then in Leviticus, in every obligation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. Neither shall thy suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering. With all thine offerings, you shall offer salt. And the Bible tells us as a church, that the Word of God is sharp and quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it pierces to the heart of man. Some uh, people, Brother Sam, don't really, they like to call this a lesson time, but I call this preaching God's Word. Because God said, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can you preach except you be sent? And so, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God and through the foolishness of preaching, we have come to know Christ as our Savior and have learned to walk with Him and talk with Him and become the salt of the earth. Church, you are the salt. 
And I think Jesus showed us a little bit as he was talking about uh, salt in, uh, in, in the, uh, in the in, if I can get my right scripture here, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, I think I've even got the wrong Bible. So y'all bear with me. I had it, Brother Sam, I did. Anyway, we'll, we know this anyway. It says, seeing the multitudes in Matthew 5, 1, he went up into the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit. So, this is part of being salt, church. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, God does not have a place in his kingdom for people that walk in and take over. He don't have a place in his kingdom for haughty people. As a matter of fact, he said when we come into his kingdom, we come as that little child, don't we? We come trusting him because the truth of the matter is without him we're nothing. Without him we could not even breathe. God actually provides our oxygen for us. Sometimes we forget about that because we take it for granted. When we and uh, I know folks that get on the oxygen machine don't take it for granted, but we sometimes take it for granted because God gives us these things, and as we uh, because of we need Him, church. We need Him, and He needs us now as salt. You're about to make some decisions, look like, or may have already made some. And, and that's determined because you are salt. And because this world needs to see that the church is just not another club. We're not a country club, but we are a part of the body of Christ where God has saved us until that day when he comes back and calls us home. We're his church today. So blessed are the poor in spirit. So that's part of being Saul is being poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, or those that are, uh, are tore up over their sins and their unrighteousness. And God says, if you come to me and, and you come to me with all your sins and all your burdens, I will comfort you, he said in the second part of this verse. For if you come to me, you shall be comforted. Then blessed are the meek, those who are, uh, because they shall inherit the earth. This is a part of our being saw. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Church, that's why you're here today. You're not here seeking evil. You're here to seek righteousness and to learn more about the righteous and holy one of Israel that came and died for you and I. And that's why we're here today, because we are seeking, seeking and hungering, Brother Sam, after the righteousness of God and the things of God, that we might walk closer to Him. And I heard it pray already that this coming week we might be that one that others might see Christ in us, or see us as salt, that we are the salt of the earth, and that as we walk in uh, with God, that others can see Him in us. So those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, the Bible says they shall be filled. Because we're dealing with uh, spiritual things here. Principalities and powers and rulers of dark places. We have an enemy this morning. But Jesus said, I defeated him, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Jesus loves you today. That's good news, church. He loves you, and he gave his life for you. In Ephesians, we see him as a, as a bride, and us as a, his bride, and coming to him. And there's two words that Jesus uses towards us. He nourishes us, and he cherishes us. As every uh, spouse should be with each other, we should nourish and cherish that relationship. 
And Jesus is nourishing you this morning and cherishing you today. And that's good news to know that we're in His hands and in His heart and in His mind. His, our name or he is even written in the palm of His hand. Jesus loves us. And I just went black here, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> First time I've done this without my Bible, my Bible I carry around. There was an old boy who got saved, and he was a brick shy below, kind of like myself. And so he got saved, and he started carrying this big old family Bible around everywhere he went. Somebody said, "Why do you carry that big old family Bible around?" He said, "It's harder for me to hide from the world when I'm carrying this big old Bible." He said, I won't go into the liquor store with it. I won't go anywhere with it that I don't want people to know that I've got God's Word with me. So maybe we need to carry a big old family Bible around with us. Amen? Amen. So uh, if we're hungry and thirst like the righteousness today, we are in God's place, in God's house. And that's what God has created us for, that we would love Him and be His people. And then he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, I like to be around Christians because usually Christians are more merciful than the world is. And they have more. If I made a mistake today, I have mercy, and I'm glad for that, church. And so it's, it's uh, good to be a part of mercy and not to be a part of this world that is always at each other's throat and everything. What I like about mercy is when I get up in the morning, Monday morning, I'll have a whole new pile of it stacked up to the heavens. And I need a lot of mercy and I need a lot of grace. And God gives me that. Well, church, you have mercy and you demonstrate mercy to those around in this community and they see the salt in you because you're demonstrating mercy and grace in the lives of other people. As you deal with them, they know that you're a Christian. Believe you me and they're watching you. Right, Brother Sam? They're watching you. And they know. They know who you're at this morning. They know that oh, Ron got up and got in his car and went to church over at Canaan Church today. They recognize you as salt. And this world needs salt. Then blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You say, preacher, what about my righteousness? Your righteousness is as filthy rain in the eyes of God. But what we've done this morning, we lifted the bread and the and the blood, and it's all because of the precious blood of Jesus that we can stand before God righteous as if we have never sinned. His word, has, His righteousness has been imputed into us as if we've never sinned. What a good God we serve. Amen? That He don't hold our sins against us. Neither do I remember them anymore. Jesus told the woman, go and, go and sin no more. And you who have sinned, cast the first stone. So uh, the pure in heart, we shall see God because of God's righteousness and because of God's love. Blessed are the peacemakers. You don't want to be known as a troublemaker. You know, uh, my mom and dad had good reputations and they didn't want me to mess it up. I had uh, two brothers and two sisters that helped me mess it up. Now, they've done pretty good. They worked pretty good. I, I may be the black sheep of the family, to be honest with you. But you always be careful because you don't want to mess up the family name. Well, we've got a family name, Canaan. And his name is Jesus. We don't want to mess him up. Do we? we want to be the salt. We want to demonstrate to this world that we are the pure in heart because we will someday see God. And we are peacemakers for we shall be called the sons of God. People know you 
People know you and know what you're doing. Blessed are they who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. That's going on in your denomination right now. But it's not going on in your denomination only. It's going on in the Baptist denomination right now too. People are saying uh, false things about you and about us. And it's uh, uh, coming against us and against God's church. The Bible says rejoice. They spoke evil things about him to start with. They called him a wine bibber, a sinner. Nobody loved like Jesus loved. Nobody walked like Jesus walked. He knew no sin. Jesus never sinned. No sin came into his life. He overcome everything for you and I. But he, he was lied on and told lies. To they had to lie to kill him. Amen. <laughs> They had to make up something to kill him. The church ain't lying about us. They lying about you. And the truth's bad enough. Amen. <laughs> so, just keep being salt. Just keep on being salt. You say, preacher, we're going to be salt. Well, as we can be. And you can be salt forever because Jesus said, you are the salt of the the only time that we don't uh, do good with salt, we kind of throw it out on the sidewalks and use it to trample on and walk on. And that's, so salt can lose its savor according to this. But we can always, church, we can always come back to the Lord. Even as a nation, God said, if my people shall humble themselves and pray and turn, turn from their sins, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sins and heal their land. That's what we need, America, is that God's people, God's people would turn from their sin. Yes, we are salt. We are salt because Jesus said we are. And we are salt to a lost and dying world. He also said we're a light. Church, we are. The world is looking at us today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that we can be salt to a lost and dying world. And as they look upon us, Lord, that they will know that we have the answer, and that answer is you, Lord. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.